Hi everyone, welcome to our devotion time. So today is November 1st. Let's read our November scripture is Psalm 86, 5. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Our devotion today is titled Recorded Wrongs from 1 Corinthians 13, 5. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you today and thank you that you keep no record of our wrongs. We ask, Father, that through this devotion you would help us to remember not to hold on to re resentment or bitterness or grudges, to forgive and to let people have the opportunity to make it right. I pray, Father, for your, your blessed anointing. I pray that you would give me the words to speak today. In Jesus' name, amen. Many experts agree that one of the ways to keep relationships healthy and strong is to avoid phrases like, you always, you never, or I can't believe you did this again. True love releases past mistakes and genuinely believes for the best next time. This gives freedom from guilt and permission for the relationship to move on and grow. This truth applies to everyone we interact with in life. Let's not keep track of people by their offenses and label them for their mistakes. Let's give freedom to grow and learn. God keeps no record of confessed wrongs. Release yourself from regrets and live in God's freedom. So I was thinking as we were reading that right now about Paul and Silas and, um, or no, Barnabas, and how they got into a fight over John Mark because John Mark had abandoned them on one of their uh, mission trips and Paul hadn't let that go. He remembered and he was kind of like, uh-uh. I just fixed my camera. I realized I was really close. Um, you know, and he was like, no, I am not taking him with me. And they got into such a volatile argument about it because he held a grudge about John Mark doing that, that they separated and Barnabas and Silas or John Mark went one way and Silas and, and Paul went another, you know, they didn't handle that. Right. And I think probably that was, um, before he wrote first Corinthians, <laughs> But it just hit me when I was reading it. But let's go into the Word today and let's look at a few verses um, that really kind of talk to us about forgiving and about not holding against others, you know, things that they've done. Let's go over to 3.13 in Colossians. Colossians 3.13. says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. It's not a suggestion. The Lord tells us emphatically that if we do not forgive others, he can't forgive us. He won't forgive us. So, you know, I, I've known people in my life who, and I'm sure all of you have as well, who are grudge holders. My mom was one for holding a grudge. I think she, you know, matured out of that as she got older, but she had been a grudge holder. And, and uh, my, unfortunately, my late mother-in-law, she, she held on to everything that people did to her in her past. And it was very sad because she was, she was, she struggled with a lot of depression and a lot of uh, negative things. And, you know, I think a lot of it was her lack of ability to be able to forgive and to really walk away from what people had done to her. Um, we cannot hold on to those things and expect to be healthy in our emotions, in our mind, in our attitude, and in our relationship with the Lord. If you know that you're holding something today, ask the Lord to help you release that thing and make that decision. Forgiveness, I have found, is a lot like love. It's a decision. It's not a feeling. And we decide if we're going to forgive. It's an action. And I've had many people I've had to forgive in my life. And um, hopefully and prayerfully, I've forgiven them all. I mean, only the Lord knows our hearts completely. So if there's a place in me that hasn't forgiven, I'm sure the Lord will show me. Let's go to Ephesians 4. verse 31 and 32. 
It says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So he was speaking to the Ephesian Christians, and he was telling them, Don't be bitter towards one another, don't have wrath and anger, don't argue and clamor and speak evil. Put all that malice and all of the anger and the wrath and the clamor and evil speaking and bitterness away from you. Put it away and choose to be kind to one another. Choose to be tender hearted and forgive one another. So if you go to church, okay, if you're in church and you have brothers and sisters that you find you clash with, be, be kind and be tender hearted and forgive them. Just as Jesus, just as God forgave you through Christ Jesus. Okay? This is from God. He says, you know what? Don't do that. Do not do that. It does not please him when the brethren are being argumentative with one another or when they're holding grudges or being angry. That does not please our Father. And I know each one of us wants so much to please him. Go over to Mark 11, verses 25 and 26. It says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. It's, it, it can't be said any more straight, right? I mean, it just can't be put any more bluntly. God says straight out, either you forgive or you don't get forgiven. Let's go to Matthew 18. God chooses to forgive us. We don't deserve it, right? We don't deserve to be forgiven. But God... Under you know when we come to him through the through his son through the blood of Christ, God says, "I choose to forgive you." And because we are in Christ, we have the ability. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We have the ability to choose forgiveness. Let's go to Matthew eighteen twenty one and twenty two. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? So Peter's like thinking that seven times is a lot of times to forgive somebody. Do you ever forgive someone and then like, let's just use our husbands or, you know, I, I don't think there's any men out there, but wives as an example. Do you ever feel like that person just does the same thing over and over and over and over and over and you forgive them and forgive them and forgive them? <laughs> and well, Peter's like, seriously, Lord, seven times is a lot, right? Is that enough? That's good, right? Seven? And Jesus looks at him and he says to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven times. 490 times. So in other words, keep forgiving over and over and over and over and then expect the best the next time. You know, when things happen between Cordy and I and he does the same thing that he's done before in whatever it is, I pray. I do. I pray and I say, Lord, I forgive him. And I ask that you would speak to his heart, that you would talk to him about this. And he always comes back and always makes it right. And it's because the Lord spoke to him about it. To me, that is, you know, at the moment, it's, it, it sometimes is difficult to stop and say, okay, I'm going to forgive and I'm going to give it to you, Lord. But when I do that, God clears my conscience of unforgiveness. And then I know he's going to talk to Courtney. I know that Courtney's going to come back and say, Honey, I'm, I was wrong and I'm sorry. 
And does he do it again? Sometimes. But you know what? I forgive him again. I think the best and hope for the best next time. Just like our devotion says. And the Lord speaks to his heart again. And, and every single time with things in our lives, not just me and Cordy, but with anyone, I have noticed that when I do that and give room for the Lord to speak to that person, that things happen less and less and less and less, you know, because he's working in them. He's working on them. He's working on all of us. He's not done with us yet. Amen. So forgive over and over and over again. That's what the Lord wants. Go to Matthew 5. Oops, turned one too far. Wait, did I? Nope, I'm good. We're going to go to verses 44 and 45. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Let's go on. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even tax collectors do the same? In other words, don't sinners do the same thing? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. See, God, he doesn't hold back the rain or the sunshine from the heathen, okay? And they're his enemy. The Bible tells us clearly over in Romans 8 that they are in enmity toward God. Those who do not believe upon his Son. And so he could easily say, you know what? When you start talking to me and and loving me, then maybe we'll talk about this, you know. But no, God doesn't do that. Our Father does not do that. And he wants us to be imitators of him. Now, when I say that, you know, I think when the Bible tells us to be imitators of Christ, we may not feel that way yet. We may not experience the overflow emotions of forgiveness. We may not feel like being nice to somebody, but God says, imitate me. Imitate me. I think as we imitate the Lord and we do what is right, that the Lord instills in us his character and his nature more and more and more. And because of that, we begin to supernaturally enjoy the experience of blessing our enemies. Okay? When you pray for your enemies, you can't sit around hating somebody you're praying for. That feeling leaves you. That anger leaves you because as you pray for that person, and I've experienced this, the Lord will give you love for them. He will begin to help you love that person, even if that person doesn't love you back. So don't tell yourself, well, I don't, I can't, I can't do what God does. I'm not God. He didn't ask you to be him. He said, imitate me. What is that? That means you're you're pretending for a minute. You're imitating. You're not you're not doing it cuz that's who you are yet. You're doing it because God says do it. He says imitate me as I give to them that are my enemies. You give to those that are your enemies. I'll deal with your heart. I'll change your emotions. I'll fix it inside of you so that you do enjoy loving them. Okay? Praise the Lord. Let's go over to Proverbs 24, 24. And then we're going to jump back over to the New Testament again. We've only got a few more scriptures here. 24, 29. It says, do not say, I will do to him just as he has done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. In other words, I'm going to get revenge. Tip for tap. You did that? Okay, I'm going to do this. You think you got away with it? No way. You didn't get one up on me. 
<laughs> you know? I mean, that is how we respond in life, right? Let's go over to Romans 12. I want to read that too because I know, if I'm not mistaken, that one also has about revenge. Romans 12, 14 through 21. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind. I apologize. There was a commercial there for a minute and I didn't realize it on my, my video. I got playing. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion and repay no evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, for in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. And do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I wrote it again. Overcome evil with good, Tara. <laughs> You know, where it says here that you'll heap fire, uh, coals of fire on his head, those coals bring about repentance upon the sinner, upon the person who has wronged you. I always pray, Lord, if I've done something in this circumstance with this person, if I'm wrong in some way, show me. But Lord, I pray that you will judge rightly between the two of us. And that if I'm not wrong, Father, and if they've wronged me, that you will bless them by bringing repentance to their hearts. I do pray that way because, and I've had people, I had a boss one time, and two, well, one boss and then the head of our, our uh, legal department, our law department, um, library department in the, the office I worked in, in a law firm. And the manager of the office, she had been told lies about me by someone and she was just not a nice person to me at all. And I just didn't even understand why until I found out later about what had happened. But, you know, one day I finally, between her and the other woman, was doing stuff to other people. They were both managers, and it was just wrong what they were doing. And it wasn't just me that the main manager was picking on. She was picking on others as well. And I began praying, and I said, Lord, please judge a rightly between us, all of us, you know, us employees and the management if we're doing something that's causing the way that they are with us, do you know, and I'm not kidding you, about a week later, they were both let go. And I and I'll, I got to say this. I prayed, Lord, bless them somewhere else. If they won't do what's right, please bless them somewhere else. So about a week later, they both got fired in the same day. And they had been with the company for over a decade, both of them. And about six months went by, and I ran into the main manager at the Starbucks across the street and she had gotten another job across the way and she was so happy oh my goodness she had gotten out of the legal management she was in more of a laid back type of a position she was managing but she was so happy and she she was like apologizing to me for being the way that she had been with me and, and she was just so happy and I was so blessed I walked away going Lord thank you you blessed her where she belonged you blessed her where she belonged or where it would make her happy and she wouldn't bring this, this negativity upon people who didn't deserve it. See, so God, God deals, you know, with things in a way that we never could understand. We, we tend to be like, curse them, Lord, curse them. And the Lord's like, okay, I'm going to bless them, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so just remember, don't take revenge for yourself, but God alone, allow him to avenge you because it's going to be so much sweeter to see what God does because he knows best. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter 3, 8, and 9. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers and be tenderhearted. Be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this 
that you may inherit a blessing. Okay? So let's remember that we were called to give love. We were called to show love. And through that, we receive our blessing. We receive our inheritance. Amen? So don't hold a grudge. Don't allow it. You know, there's a scripture in Proverbs, and I'm not going to go there, but it says that bitterness dries up the bones. Okay? It literally causes arthritis. Now stop and think about that. Bitterness, resentment, anger, unforgiveness, those negative emotions, they've actually associated negativity like that inside of us to cancer in sci- within science. I mean, it's, 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 it's a toxin that stays in your body and impacts your physical body, not just your spiritual body and your mind. So let's release anything we're holding on to today to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we confess that we have held resentment in our hearts. Let's pray that personally. Lord, I confess that I have held resentment in my heart toward people who have offended me. I release those wrongs to you now and ask you to help me erase them from my heart. You are perfect in your love for me and I want to be more like you. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, and thank you today for your forgiveness. We praise you and thank you that you help us every day to be more and more like your dear son. Help us to be imitators of Christ and to learn and grow in forgiveness and love. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. God bless you. I hope you have have a wonderful day. Thank you for being with me today. And I will see you tomorrow. I love you so much. Bye.